Hello everyone, Alaska Prepper here. It's been a few days since I've done a video, so today I thought I'd do a real quick video to show you all how easy it is to store approximately 37,000 calories of beans in long-term food storage. And just to let you know, these two packs of beans I've got here We've got a 12, pack, 12 pound pack of black beans, and we have a 12 pound pack of pinto beans that I picked up at my local uh, Sam's Club. I do believe that altogether I paid around $25 for these two 12 pound packs of beans. And in these 24 pounds of beans, you're looking at about 3,000 grams of protein and 37,000 plus calories. And of course, most of those calories are gonna be carbohydrates, a little bit of fat. I didn't break down the carbs or the fat, but there's a lot of protein in them, those two 24 pound bat and 24 pounds of uh, beans. So you're gonna need a few things in order to successfully store these beans for a really long time, really, really long time. Okay, first thing you're gonna need, of course, is your beans. You're gonna need some oxygen absorbers. You're going to need a Mylar bag that'll fit in a five gallon container. You're gonna need a piece of wood, probably about at least a couple feet long. This one's probably about three and a half feet long, but a, a couple feet long will do. You're gonna need a bucket a lid, and you're going to need an iron. Okay, so <clears throat> the Mylar bag is great for not letting any air in or any light in. Of course, as you know, oxygen degrades or oxidizes anything that's biodegradable. And you want to keep as much oxygen out of the container as you want, or sorry, as you can, so that, number one, the material inside, i.e. the beans we're using, won't get oxidized. And number two, bugs cannot live without oxygen. So one of the things that I do to prepare these beans for packaging is, prior to packaging them, I either leave them outside if it's winter time, uh, where it's freezing temperatures for a couple of days, or at a minimum 24 hours. And if not, you can put them in a freezer, in a deep freezer for 24 hours. And what that'll do is, is that'll kill any microscopic bugs that are in there. So it'll assist in helping your food last longer because there won't be any bugs in there. However, if there are any bugs in there, you know, any microscopic bugs that you can't see, the oxygen absorber will suck up all the oxygen and they will die. And they won't hurt you if you eat these beans five, six, ten years, however many years later. The oldest beans that I've eaten from storing was about five years old. And they tasted just like if I took them out of the package, you know, from buying them from the store that same day. Absolutely no difference whatsoever. So there's no reason why anyone can't spend $25, even if you're on a low budget. Think about it. How many times do you go out for pizza every month? You know, this is $25 is maybe half of a pizza dinner for a family of four or five. So sacrifice a little bit of uh, fast food and you can get some long term food storage for your family for the times when they when they may need it really bad. Uh, a good complement for this would be a 50 pound bag of rice, which you can pick up a 50 pack pound of rice, a 50 pound bag of rice for less than $20. So you're looking at for $50, you could probably feed your family the bare minimums for about two to three weeks, depending on how large your family is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what, what I do to get this prepared for long-term food storage. As you can see, I've got the bucket already with a Mylar bag in it already. Since I don't have a helper here, I needed to get this prepared first. That way I can handle 
uh, the camera and do this at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of these bags, put them in here, okay? Put it in there. I'm gonna grab the other bag, I'm gonna shove it in there as well. Just gonna push it in there. Now something you wanna do is, is you wanna poke a little hole in the bag. Okay, which I did right there, just put your finger through it. It's not gonna hurt anything. So I just went ahead and I poked a little bit of a hole in the bag. All right, to make sure that whatever air is in there, whatever oxygen is in there can get sucked out by the oxygen absorber. Okay, now what we're gonna do is, let me put my camera over here. See if we can uh, give you a better view. Let's see. Oh, look at that, that worked out. That worked out pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna take this oxygen absorber. As you can see, I got my oxygen absorber in this mason jar. Cause what happens is, is when you take these out of their packages, they start oxidizing right away. What an oxygen absorber is, is a packet, as you can see, that's filled with, with a, like powdered iron. Now iron oxidizes really quick when oxygen hits it. So what, what uh, the creators of this thing do is, is they take iron and they turn it into a powder and they put it in these packets. Now the powder gives the iron in there a lot more surface area for the oxygen to interact with it, causing it to oxidize at a very quick rate. Now oxidizing, when something oxidizes, it actually creates heat and it sucks up oxygen. So these things can get a little bit warm if you hold them, if you take them out and hold them, you'll feel them getting a little bit warm. That means that they're actually oxidizing as you're holding them. These are very similar, believe it or not, to hand warmers. Hand warmers work with the same concept. They're, they're filled with iron oxide, and when you take them out of their package and int introduce them to oxygen, uh, they start getting warm. This is kind of like the same thing. I've actually used hand warmers in the past to uh, act as an oxygen absorber when I run out of these. So what I do is this, once I open this up, I take out what I need and then I put the lid back on and it'll seal itself because the rest of the oxygen absorbers in there will absorb the oxygen that's in the jar and will actually seal the, seal the lid back, back up. So I'm gonna take one of these out. You can hear, hear, hear it pop. And this is a pretty big one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use one it's really all you need. Just dump it in there. I'm gonna put my lid back on my jar to make sure that I don't ruin the oxygen absorbers that are already in there. Put this up. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and get our piece of wood, set it up here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, flatten this out a little bit. And if you have a helper, what you can do is, it, you don't really have to do this, but you can actually leave a little bit open when you, when you still seal this up with the iron. You can actually leave a little bit open and actually put a straw in there and suck out whatever air is in there. However, if you do this, you'll notice that after a couple of days, you'll see that the bag actually sucked itself in because the oxygen absorber was doing its job. So I just go ahead and make sure that this is nice and flat. I'll grab my iron. And if you've never done this before, it's very easy. All you do is iron it. You want to use a piece of wood that's nice and flat, that doesn't have a lot of grooves in it, to make sure that you get this bag sealed up really well. That right there is all you need to do. To get this job done and as you can see it's very easy I'm done this process is done take a piece of wood out as you can see it's nice and sealed then all you do is push this in push that in right there get your lid that's it, these beans are good for years of storage and they'll be just as good as they are right now in five years or however many years you keep them in there. Beans will actually last a really long time because when they're here, they're already really dry. 
So they'll last a long time. Now, depending on where you store your food, you may not need to have one of these buckets. All of my long-term food storage, I store beneath my house where I have a, like a storage area. But under there in the wintertime especially, some field mice, they find themselves inside because they're trying to look for warmth. And uh, there are, I know there are some field mice I get in under my house. So I make sure that I put it in one of these buckets so that the mice can't get through this plastic. They won't get through this plastic. I've had food down there in buckets like this for a little over a year now. And they've not penetrated any of the plastic uh, buckets that I have down there. And uh, the food that I have down there is just as good as it was when I put it down there. So when you store this, you want to make sure that you don't let any extreme heat or any extreme uh, ups and downs in heat occur. That really doesn't help it very much. It's not going to destroy the food, but it's better if you keep it at a constant temperature. The rule that I follow is to try to keep my food storage, especially my long-term food storage, below 70 degrees. So as long as you keep it below 70 degrees, I keep mine between 50 and 60 degrees. Because even in the summertime, when it's uh, a little bit warm outside, let's say it's 80, 85 degrees outside, well, where I have this food stored under my home, it always stays around 55, 60 degrees in there, even in the summertime. And in the wintertime, when it's like negative 20, negative 40, it's heated down there. I have a heater down there, and that will um, uh, keep it down there around 60 degrees. So it's always around between 45 and 60 degrees down there all year long. And that will make sure that your food uh, lasts a pretty long time. Uh, that's going to be it for this one. This was a short video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Just remember that it doesn't cost a lot of money to store food for your family. Food is a commodity that you will always use. Uh, buy things and store things that you know you will eat. Don't get all of these gimmicky long-term food storage items that look really cool, but you've never even tried it before. Buy things that you know you will eat. I have some of the food storage items that come in the number 10 cans that are like 25-year shelf life. But before I buy them, I buy one and I try it and I uh, make sure my family likes it. And um, when everyone gives me a thumbs up, I'm like, all right, cool. I can store this. I can get some more of this. Because the worst thing that you want to happen is, is that when you need the food for real nutrition that you eat things that you really don't like. Because if you are in an environment where you're having to dig into your food storage, it might, it's probably already somewhat of a stressful environment if you have to do that. And why add even more stress to that situation? By having to eat things that you really don't like or that you're not used to eating. Here in our home, we like to eat beans. I mean, we don't eat it every day, but we like beans, you know, and we eat rice and uh, we don't mind eating that kind of stuff. So storing beans like this is really cheap and it makes a lot of sense because we know we're going to eat it. This will never go to waste. And guess what? In five years, these beans will probably be a lot more uh, in nominal terms. They'll cost a lot more money than what they cost now because inflation never ends. The, the government's always printing money which means that the things you buy are always going to be more expensive. Okay, so think ahead, prepare, not only for yourself, but for your family. And if you can, prepare for your neighbors. If your neighbors are ignorant to what's going on in the world, and if they're ignorant to the fact that they need to store food, you know, prepare for them. You, if you ever decide to give charity during times of trouble, People don't have to know that it's you that's giving it. If your neighbors need help, you can always just leave food on their porch at nighttime or something like that, you know. But I always think of preparing as preparing for myself, my family, and my neighbors. Because your neighbors during a crisis, your neighbors are going to be very important to you, believe it or not. So I'm not going to keep talking and talking and talking. You guys know I can do that pretty well. So 
like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys have any uh, any suggestions on what you would like me to go over next, let me know. I even have some old Army MREs. If you guys wanted me to do any reviews on MREs like that, I'll be more than happy to do that. Just let me know. And if you like the video, hey, smash that like button. If you don't like it, smash the I don't like button, the down button, and let me know why you don't like it. And we'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. I hope you all have a blessed Thanksgiving. If you are traveling, be safe. And I hope that you have a great time with your family this week. Uh, enjoy yourselves. Be safe. And bless, blessings to all of you and your family. Happy Thanksgiving this week. This is Alaska Prepper, and I'm out.